Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Thank you for tuning in today. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe not, I don't know, but I just purchased not one, but two 2005 Honda Elements. Yes, two, not just one, I got two. I got this beige one and I got a green one. And honestly, I've never seen one of these in beige. I always like the green and I always like the orange, but this beige, it, it's me. I love it. I really, really love it. In today's video, I'm going to get a look up underneath and around both of these vehicles to find out what they need. And I'll also let you know why I ended up buying two of them. But more importantly, this particular one, the former owner says that uh, he took it to his shop and they diagnosed that the engine was bad and they wanted to replace it. So I'm going to go through and do my diagnosis and see if I can confirm what they had to say about it. Or uh, maybe I got a really good deal on this element. I don't know. Let's check it out. This is the 2.4 liter K series engine. And I've already removed this upper cover so I can get access to the coil pack so we can do a quick power balance test. I'm sure you'll hear an issue as I start it up. You can see how shaky it is. It's obviously got a miss. So I'm gonna do a power balance test here real quick. See if we can find the offending cylinder or cylinders. What I'm looking for when I unplug it is for the RPM to drop. If it drops, I know that cylinder is working. If it doesn't, then it's not. All right, that one's working. That one, not so much. Looks like cylinder number two. That one's working. That one's working. Cylinder number two is dead. No change. So, since uh, both of these fasteners are loose, I'm gonna switch these two coil packs. If, number if this miss moves from two to four, then I know it's a coil pack problem. I don't see any oil or anything on here, which is a good sign. Although, that doesn't look good. That looks like it could be a burned up coil right there. That rusty stuff. I could be wrong though. Yeah, it could be, that could be absolutely nothing. Ignore me. These were switched. Nope, still got a miss. It's not a coil pack. Let's get the plugs out and have a look. That stripe on there is a little weird, but it seemed to be working, so. Well, it's got the correct plugs in it. That's a good sign, NGKs. Possibly a little bit of oil burning going on here. That's the one I really wanna know about. This guy is definitely crusty. So there's something happening there. I would say once again, a little bit of oil residue. That's what that brown residue is. This one's worse than the other one. Also shows signs of burning oil. So I might have to agree with this assessment because even if, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe it's just a cylinder head problem. But when I see crusty uh, oil residue on plugs, that's bottom end. Almost always bottom end. You want to hope for valve seals, but you don't want to take that chance. All right, well, let's uh, do a compression test. Actually, that looks like a pretty old plug. Look at that gap. Okay, compression test time. Before I crank it over, I'm gonna pull this 15 amp fuse right here. Um, that is the fuel injection in the ECU, so it shouldn't be pumping fuel while I'm cranking the engine. Cylinder number one. Well, that ain't great. <laughs> 90 PSI, Eww. or a little over 90. Given how slow it was cranking, I'm gonna try to give the battery a little bit of a boost here. All right, let's try this again, hopefully with more battery voltage. Still not impressive. 
That looks like barely 100. Let's see what our problem cylinder does. Not much of anything. Okay, well we know that's a problem. Just for the heck of it, I'm just gonna throw some compressed air in there to see if I can hear where it's leaking. I take the Schrader valve out first. Then we'll do it. So for this little trick to work, I need to remove that Schrader valve. You might say, hey Eric, why not use a proper leak down checker? Well, I don't, I don't care how the percentage <laughs> of compression that's being lost. I care about where it's going. Is it going past the rings? Is it going past the valves? Where's it going? That's all I care about. Well, based on what I'm hearing here, it's coming out like these cylinders that are right next to it. Especially that one. So, I'll go through the motions and I'll check the compression in cylinders three and four, but from what I'm hearing, seeing, uh, without a complete rebuild, uh, it's just not worth it. And a complete rebuild is often more time and expense and effort than it's worth, at least in my view. What does cylinder number three have to offer? Well, at least it's consistent with uh, cylinder one. And finally, cylinder four. Well, they're all about the same. So that is good, except cylinder two is done diddly dead. That's all back together. Let's get it up in the air and get a look at the suspension brakes and the rest of the car. That's solid. Also solid. I think you saw that the front suspension was solid, which I'm grateful for that. Like the chassis looks good. Way less rusty than mine. <laughs> I don't see like any massive oil leaks here that say, yeah, that's the cause. I'm gonna say maybe we ran it low on oil. Catalytic converter, it's all welded in there with a piece of flex pipe joint stuff. I'm not terribly excited about that. But the exhaust is fairly new, so it looks like it'll be some time before I have to mess with it. Yeah, way less rusty than mine, although I think we found it. And it looks like there was a little bit of a collision there. So between the rust and that, in fact, when you open and close the tailgate, I'll do that for you in a minute. The plastic pops, and I had a feeling that this had been pushed in a little bit, but it looks like this one could use a rear bumper. Luckily, this piece is replaceable. We'll just have to find one from a better climate. So this is what clued me into an issue back here. And it's when you open this tailgate, hear that? It's binding right there. So that told me that the bumper had been pushed in or moved in a place that, that wasn't advantageous. Also, I can see this gap over here on this plastic portion, although that's on mine too. But anyway, it uh, looks like the rear bumper and replace that and we should be all right. With both of these new to me elements, I went through and checked the spare tire, filled it up with air, checked the tools, checked to make sure that the jack was there. One thing I do like about the elements is when they store their spare tires, that the tire valve is up so you can fill it up without having to remove it. That's kind of nice. But it's also nice that they both have complete spare tires and jacks and tools to go with them. But otherwise, actually it's not bad at all. Like I said, way better than mine. Ooh, just found that. So we got a CV boot leak back here that we should address. And given that it's just a boot, I'm just gonna do the boot. The exhaust is fairly new. I suppose I could live with it. I'm trying to see if I can find any signs of collision damage other than what I just showed you, which was super minor. Yeah, there's this. 
See that? That, I don't know if that was pulled by a frame puller or something like that, but it should look like that. And it does not. So I wonder if there was some collision work done on this or somebody tried to pull it out of a hole or something. Either way, somebody pulled on that well too hard. But this is a boo-boo here. So we went off the road at some time. So if you take a look at this, this, is, this did its job. This is bent right here. You can see how it's bent right there. This should be extending down, but it's not. I can easily bend that back and that's really more cosmetic than anything. But I say this thing went off road at some point and somebody had to haul it out. And maybe, just maybe, yeah, that's not cool. Maybe, just maybe, that's when that uh, damage in the back where a hook went into that hole back there happened. In fact, I think that's the most plausible explanation. So I say at some point this thing went off the road and was hauled out. But really, looks pretty good under here. That CV boot is also slinging, or at least it was. You might see some of that residue up there. That coil spring looks a little crusty up the top though. Those ball joint boots don't give me a lot of confidence. That may be at some point in the future. Ended up doing those on my other one. But this side doesn't look that much better. Front tires are junk. Rear tires look almost brand new. Let's have a look behind these wheels. These brakes are brand new. They left the rotor screws out though. Like brand new. Now those bushings are gonna have to go. So the brakes look practically brand new. Rotor screws are missing. I like using them, not necessary, but it is kind of annoying to me. Something else you might notice is these bushings on the control arms. Same thing happened to my other element. Uh, those will have to be addressed at some point. Same situation on this side. And once again, brakes, new. Rears, there's a similar story. Brakes are good, but this, this is what I don't like, and this is what I'm upset about. They left the rubber plug out and just threw that away. So now debris and crap can get down into the parking brake assembly. So I will be seeking out some of these uh, to at least fix that. Same situation over here. They left this out. Like I said, the rudder screws, man, yeah, I can care less about that. Wheel holds those on, but this allows debris to get into this assembly. That's no bueno. I paid $1,800 for this one. It looks like it's going to need an engine, but really not much else. Just a few little, little things. I mean, the brakes, a little bit of suspension work up front. Nothing I have to worry about right this second. And yeah, you probably already saw that headlight up there. Still, um, for $1,800, yeah, I'm going to need an engine, which will probably set me back about a grand and, you know, a day or so of, of replacement. But then I'll have a running and driving element, which these things I would say are worth about 4,500 to five grand these days. I'm developing a theory on this beige element. And that theory is this thing ended up off the road underwater at some point. And part of that is based on when I was doing the spare tire stuff, I went through here and I ran the vacuum in, but there's a bunch of dirt and sediment that was actually all packed into this area. I wish I would have taken uh, footage before that. There's one more thing that uh, kind of clues me into this. In addition to that sediment that I found in the back, I also look at this floor, which you'll notice is like really weird. And yeah, these floors get a little weird over time, but this just looks and actually smells a little bit like flood damage to me. So I'm starting to lean more and more towards that this one ended up underwater at some point. This theory might also explain the blown engine if the engine and everything, if this thing went underwater and the engine took in water, it could have been a connecting rod or something like that. So when I take this out, I'm gonna tear it down and take a look at the connecting rods. If I find a bent connecting rod, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. So I think either it went off the road, sucked in water, or they tried to get it 
unstuck and blew the engine doing that, I really don't know. Either way, I know it's kind of difficult to blow one of these up without some kind of external outside force. One more thing I forgot to mention. The owner stated that he had recently put a new clutch in this, so that may very well be something I don't have to worry about when I replace the engine. So it'll have a new clutch and all this other stuff. Once again, I think in many ways, this is a pretty good deal. There are seat covers in this one. Let's see why. Yep, it's a bit warm, but I don't feel the need to take it off. They actually look pretty nice. The seat belt's rather frazzled. I don't like that. Also this which allows it to move up and down. One of the things I like about the Element so much is just the stuff that you can put into it. With the seats folded up, I believe it's 72 feet, cubic feet of storage space that you have. In addition to being able to cram all that stuff into the back, I really like the access to the rear cargo area or rear seating area with these clamshell doors. You've got this huge open space that you can move things in and out of with no B pillar in the way. That I think is kind of cool. You can also, you know, have three people in the vehicle with you comfortably and it gets relatively decent gas mileage. The downside is it seems to get blown around quite a bit on the highway on windy days, but I can kind of live with that. But for me, as far as a vehicle that suits my needs, the Element does it, hence the reason I bought two. Let's get the other one in and have a look at it. So you probably thought I was pulling in my old element when you saw this one rolling up in here, <laughs> but there are a couple of differences. One of the main differences is this one does not have a roof rack. It also does not have the side steps and neither does the other one. And I'm kind of happy about that because that makes putting it on the lift that much easier. This one's in a little bit of a rougher shape. Uh, the hood has some rust spots on it. Also the driver's side doors uh, have some damage, but it doesn't affect the opening and closing of the doors at all. Uh, this one just seems a little bit more used, but it doesn't seem to have the same history as the other one. The engine runs and drives in this one just fine. Although I did drive this one and the tires are kind of old and a little bit chunky, so I'll probably end up replacing those. It's like deja vu all over again, right? And the air conditioning in this one works excellent. So I've already tested that out and that works great. Although this will be the first time I get a chance to look up underneath it and see what kind of shape it's in. But under here looks pretty good. Also, this one seems to have a newer good battery. Tiny bit of play in that outer tie rod. Tiny, tiny, just starting. This side seems a little bit more solid. Looks like this one had a front end collision. So we've got some deformation there and a little bit here that shows that this had an impact uh, from the front. This tire back here is the worst of the bunch. And this is somewhat typical of tires that I see that just don't work out on Honda. Some might look at this and say strut problem. Uh, we'll get a look at the strut and see if it's leaking or something like that. But these are Goodyear tires. I personally haven't seen Goodyear tires work out on Hondas. So, and this, this is typically what I find. It's usually inner edge feathering, just weirdness that seems to happen with them. The selection of tires on a Honda is extremely important. These are the tires that, the summer tires that I've been running on mine. And these are Nokian N-Tire 2.0s. Uh, basically they're SUV type of line. Now, this also a little bit, I'm starting to feel some weirdness in here. So it's, it's just, it's a tread design thing. Now, Michelin Defenders would probably be awesome. I'm not sure what they put on these uh, from the factory, if, if I'm totally honest. But I like Michelin Defenders on Odysseys, and I think they'd work well on this one too. Uh, this, these aren't bad. They're not as bad as the ones that are on it now. But they are showing, starting to show some signs. Although, I probably should get the alignment checked on this as well. So that could help. Also, I think at the end of the day though, that these tires and wheels, since they're already mounted and everything, might just end up on this element before it leaves the shop today. Let's get a look up under this one, which is considerably rusty than the other one, and it's on par with uh, mine. Also, there's uh, quite a bit of oil residue over here, which I'm thinking, based on its location, 
Uh, could possibly be that VTEC solenoid leaking, although no. I'm thinking this might just be either the oil pan gasket or uh, just messy oil changes and not cleaning up afterward. I think that might be more in line. But underneath the solenoid up there is bone dry. But it certainly is rusty, that's for sure. Lots of rust and there's a little bit of an issue going on with that CV boot. Looks like an aftermarket axle. The other one had aftermarket axles also. Um, looks like the same exact spot on this coil spring and the same exact side. Looks like a little bit of rustiness there. That's funny. Passenger side looks fine. It was like this on the other side and the other uh, element too. We got some crusties. Also the CV boot on this side. Looks like it needs a little bit of help. We don't need that anymore. It looks like they went to the same exhaust place or this seems to be how they do it. As they just stick a piece of pipe in there and shove some exhaust down here. Now with this one, this one had a rattle when I was driving it and I think it was an exhaust rattle. I'm correct. That muffler's come apart internally. Very rusty. And it's like looking up under mine. Or my old one, I should call it, because all three of these are mine. We'll talk about my plans at the end of the video. Also, the rear bumper. This one's pretty much rotted away. Otherwise though, the struts don't look to be leaking, anything like that. And yeah, there's rust, but the bushings still seem to be intact. Let's get the wheels off and have a look at what we've got. Also look fairly new. Also missing rotor screws. It's almost like the same shop worked on both vehicles, which is weird because I got them in two different states. Like I said, it's like they were worked on at the same stinking shop. So the brake pads are fairly new, as far as I can see and feel. The bushings on this one don't look as bad as they did on the other one, weirdly. Brake hose looks okay, things are a little crusty. Once again, rotor screws went missing, but so what? They also anti-seize the crap out of everything. This is what you get when you get your brakes done at the tire store. <laughs> it's pretty much what I'm seeing. More of the same over here. And also that bushing looks all right. Tire store brake job. Mm. Plenty of friction material back here. The rotors look, I don't know. Is this caliper moving like it should? That's the question that I have. Or they just didn't replace the rotors and just pad slapped it and it was kind of crusty. So I'm not sure what direction this was, what direction was taken here. More of the same, chunky. Although I dare say my, my backing plates on my element were worse than these, if you can believe that. Also, my calipers were just as crusty. Why not adjust the parking brake while I'm here? Well, just because I'm not in love with this brake job, I'm gonna go and look things over how much you want to wager that uh, there's grease on these slide pins instead of silicone paste. Yep, that boot is messed up. And that looks like molly grease. No, silicone grease only. Not molly grease, because guess what? That eats the rubber boots. Silicone does not. The molly grease will cause the rubber to expand 
and it won't it will actually cause the pins to bind so these boots should go into the back of the caliper and stay there but now they won't because they've been compromised which is very unfortunate totally preventable just by following the correct procedure but you know that takes time actually it doesn't take any time at all it just takes being supplied with the correct stuff I'm going to do the other three wheels because I know they were done in the same way and I've covered this before. I'm going to do the, the brakes on the other vehicle. I'm not so worried about that one now because I need to find an engine for it. It might be a minute before I get there. So that one can sit. But this one, I'm going to take care of these brakes real quick. We'll be back. Here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I just pulled out the front slide pin. There's supposed to be a rubber bushing on the end of this that helps keep things quiet during braking. It's gone. Whenever grease or petroleum-based lubricants are used on these slide pins, that rubber swells up and usually disappears. This is typical of what I see. Just an FYI, use silicone paste only on these slide pins. Don't use anything else, at least on Hondas. And by the way, this was starting to stick in the bore, so it wasn't even lubricating. So here's the rubber bushing right here on the end that should have been on the other side. And this one was already starting to stick inside the bore. Here's more evidence. This caliper looks newer, so this, this one doesn't look that old. But check out that boot. There was grease put into this, and this boot's totally disintegrated on what would be a new caliper. Stop using grease on slide pins, silicone paste only. All in all, not a bad vehicle. A little rusty, a little crusty around the edges, a little bit of poor maintenance. Well, that just kind of annoys me. That's more of my issue, I suppose. Anyway, all in all, I, I actually think this element's pretty decent. And FYI, I bought this element for $3,600. Now you're probably asking the question, Eric, why the heck did you just buy two elements? And that's an excellent question. And I'll try to answer it now. Now, those of you that have been following along may remember that I had mentioned that I was gonna give my element to my brother. And that was gonna happen relatively soon. However, I've been teaching my 15, almost 16 year old daughter to drive in that element. It's an automatic, it's easy for her to drive and she's gotten kind of used to it. The more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, my only other option to teach her with is my minivan and my wife uses that mostly and that's a larger vehicle and a little more to handle, if you will. So I'd, I'd like to keep her driving the element. That's why I went looking for another element. Well, it just so happens I found two with manual transmissions, which uh, they're hard to find, at least in my experience. And I went and looked at both of them with the intention of only buying one, but I ended up buying both. So this is how it's going to break down. My brother is going to get this uh, manual transmission element. I'm going to give my automatic transmission element to my daughter for her 16th birthday, which ironically, her brother got the exact same vehicle for his 16th birthday, but he traded it back to me in exchange for that 2005 Honda Civic and a year's worth of insurance. I threw that in as well. Now the beige element that's left over, that's gonna be my element. So I get a chance to keep it or, or keep an element in my fleet. It's just been one of the most useful vehicles I've ever had and I like having it around. I also like the fact that I can store a bunch of stuff in it and I can still park it in my very tiny garage space, but it's still inside the garage and I like that. So that's how it's gonna break down. My brother's getting one, my daughter's getting one, and I'm keeping one. That's how it is. And I'll do some repairs and stuff like that along the way and make some videos and such, but especially the one with the engine, which is kind of going to go on the back burner for a bit because I don't really need it right now. And the weather's starting to get warmer, so I won't be driving the element as much. I usually drive it in the winter. That's an awfully long explanation, I know. Anyway, if you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I'll put a link to airatthecarguide.com down in the description, along with links to tools and other information that you might find helpful, including other videos about element service, if you're interested in that. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you tune in again. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I will see you next time.